Sony Sports. I have a bit of a legacy when it comes to predictions to protect to the point where sometimes players would win tournaments and literally thank me in their acceptance speech for picking them so that they could win the tournament. Mm. Um, but RDU has tweeted that he is here to play spoilers to my prediction this time around. Yeah, I also have quite the legacy in uh, predictions <laughs> as well. Uh, unfortunately, it's the curse giver uh, that is <laughs> me. So I... I picked Surrender, didn't do so well. Uh, that was super unlucky. And now I hope that that's not going to come true for Frenetic because I really do think he's got his lineup on point. But we are already diving into our first game. I'm sure we could just talk about lineups and we, what player could do what for many, many hours. But for now, it's Frenetic's Demon Hunter going up against RDU's Mage. And as is often the case in Europe, RDU does have Encanter's Flow, but he also, Sotil, has Deck of Lunacy. So again, are we going to see a slower approach? I was waiting what was going to happen then, because I thought he clicked the coin. Yeah, speaking of legacies, RDU has a legacy of drawing the blue card in Hearthstone Grandmasters. Um, it's an interesting one, right? Demon Hunter kind of is more interested in you building boards against them than they are just straight up burning your face. But only a couple of boards, right? Like the first few boards that you build with Deck of Lunacy, they'll Immolation Aura, they'll Fell Screen Blast. Then they run out of stuff to clear. Um, but at the same time, just having a bunch of cheap burn in your deck can be very hard to resist for Demon Hunter as well, because there really is only that one climb back, um, usually over the course of the game with a with a big eye beam, right? You can kind of reno once as Demon Hunter in this matchup. But the tricky part is knowing what number you have to do it from. And that number changes right. when your opponent has played Encanter's Flow because they can fit more potential burn into a single turn. But there you see it, skipped hero power on two, which means RDU has committed to going full greed here with the uh, Encanter's Flow. With Sorry, with the deck of lunacy into Encanter's yeah. Flow. And one of the benefits is being on coin means he can, like, Lunacy on three, right? And then play yeah. Encanter's Flow and have a bit of a smoother transition uh, than normally would be the other way around. Frenetic not really having the most mind-blowing opening as well, right? Really hoping on this Thalnos to get him into more card draw. Mm-hmm. Oh, Springwater being the last draw before he drops the Lunacy as well, I think is perfect for RDU. Because now look at the curve, right? He's playing Encanter's Flow plus card draw on four, and then right. more card draw on five while refreshing Mana Crystals. That's very, very powerful. And for a silver lining here for Frenetic, he does have a very dumpable hand, doesn't he, now? Especially with that draw of the Moag, which means he can... Uh, you can argue about the Arcanist, but he can just throw away some of these uh, cards to get uh, anything he needs to the far left. Filthy with the Barricade. Okay, Thro Throglave is a decent pickup, at yep. least. It would leave a Moag needing to be played here. Yeah, he just plays the uh, Fell Screen Blast. Sorry, the uh, Immolation Aura. Yeah, interesting. He'll end right. up only doing three damage because of Blood Mage Thanos. It's not like the uh, Arcanist effect, which is a battle cry and therefore stays even after it's dead. It, the Blood Mage Thanos has to be alive for you to have that spell damage. And I think you see the, the nods towards Deck of Lunacy already, right? Because I think there, there was an argument to just throw Glaive twice, get the card gone, and keep going. But against Deck of Lunacy, as you mentioned, you're expecting more boards, and suddenly a Moag plus Throw Glaive can, can work wonders. True. Here, though, oh, it's disgusting. It's just like, just Scenarium Ward on four mana, okay? Like... RDU's considering Ring Toss here because it's Skull Turn, though. From his perspective, that's very reasonable. We're staring at a no-skull hand, so yeah. we see no reason why you wouldn't just play, like, a giant 8-8 eight -eight or whatever on this turn from the Scenarian Ward. But from RDU's perspective, Ring Toss to hit Counterspell to disrupt the, the Skull Turn could have been a very big deal that turn. But in the end, he does just go for the big minion instead. And that is another level of disruption, isn't it? It's one of the things other decks do when they can't directly stop a skull being played, is they play a big minion into the skull turn because it's unlikely that it can be cleaned up. Attic is going to clear this, though. Got fairly fortunate. I'm not exact on the, the numbers for the... Um, for the scenario ward, but I know the drops are normally insane, and a 7-5 is not what I would call insane. Yeah, 8 drops oh. are massive. Sol's favorite card! It 
it's a little awkward this turn, but at the same time, you have the card survival of the <laughs> Yes, I was going to say, so. it's awkward, but what if you just win next turn? How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Who and am I kidding? And he's seeing double immolation aura, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably just party up. And yep, that fool. Let's do it. There must be a way. Double Divine Shield as well. Not bad. Yeah, Double Divine Shield is huge. Even if he just gets to protect those two minions, right? The, yep. the damage that that pushes with the uh, survival on the following turn. I see. Okay, I-Beam's nice. But I'm not sure if it's going to be enough here. I think we'll just see Frenetic pick this apart with the throw glaive. No, he is going to go for the I-Beam heal. Okay. Well, the end of the reach. that's the problem, that the board was actually a huge nightmare with stealth and two divine shields. Otherwise, throw glaive would be sick, right? Yeah. Just kill, 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 done. Carry on with your day. But the True. three of the minions not down to throw glaive is, <laughs> is a big problem. I believe that's against all odds, right? Yeah. It's just been picked up. Which, uh, entirely useless. I mean, this has to be survival, right? I think RDU is just thinking of if and where there are trades. I think trading into the Moag with the stealth one and retaining Divine Shield looks pretty solid. I oh. also like keeping the Divine Shields, yeah. I mean, as soon as the stealth attacks, it's just a 6-6, six, six, right? Yeah, okay. I was a little bit worried that he aimed the Divine Shield first. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Okay. Again. Poor is this a game? <laughs> no. No. Ah, okay. Philosophy again now. He can now go Moag I-Beam and have Philosophy on a zero mana Moag guaranteed on the following turn. So if he just plays a Moag and an I-Beam, he heals for six, he goes to 19, there's 12 on board, he dies to Mask because of the Moag effect. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But... You don't necessarily have to account for your opponent having burn uh, in their deck of lunacy hand, right? Yep. And I do enjoy the more tense a game gets. Sol just says, okay, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Cards are drawn. But yeah, this is just, oh, party up into survival of the fittest. That's a tough one to deal with. Especially with those Divine Shields protecting them so well. And I don't even know what Frenetic can even dig for here. Oh, really? So you're going to go Philosophy, zero mana, zero mana, Felbit? Yeah, okay, 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 okay. This is actually smart. I like this. Yeah, this gives him a much higher chance of being safe, right? Yep. It has cost him. And there's still just two six sixes on the board with that divine shield. That's right. Was that Dunk oh, Tank? Oh, Dunk Tank, yeah. Yeah. That's just four damage for zero mana from hand. Yes, it is. It also, well, I mean, it's actually a lot more than that because it, if he corrupt, well, he can't corrupt. No, he did just corrupt it. So he can just shoot it face. It automatically yeah. clears the Moog and he can just dunk the mask. Is this not just lethal? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> That's one off. Oh. Whoa. No, it is. It's oh, it is. It is. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a weird way that he had to do it, right? Or that he went around to do it, but makes yeah. sense. And RDU takes the win there. And again, it is just the faith in Deck of Lunacy. And I know it's um, the Spell Mage kind of split the player base in two. And I mean the player base of Spell Mage, of people who like burn, go, 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 and people who like lunacy. But honestly, the more the game has changed, the more obviously it took a few nerfs, but I, you can just see the power of just committing to lunacy. Yes, yeah, sometimes it whiffs and you get all the draw cards and do nothing or all the AOE removal when you want boards, but a good chunk of the time you get some just pretty powerful turns. And I think RDU saw one of the uh, the most powerful turns here, just with that party up working out so well for him. Yeah. And then the lethal at the end. Again, we got a little bit distracted. RDU was just picking secrets that didn't really matter in the end. He just had lethal with the uh, with the Donk Tonk and the mask straight up. But I actually think Deck of Lunacy even got a little bit better this expansion. And you saw the exact reason why there, which is the addition of party up to the pool. 
Um, because suddenly, that means your fireballs and ring tosses and any other four mana cards you might have in your deck suddenly now have a chance of being a board in a can. And board in a can is the most valuable genre of card that you can have in your deck when you're playing a uh, deck of lunacy, right? And seven mana spells didn't really do that a lot of the time. Cycle of Hatred did, but it was situational. Soul Mirror did, but it was situational. Now you just have this universal five two twos um, that you can draw at any point and um, in a mana slot that just didn't really offer that to you before, which I do think improves the consistency of the deck by quite a lot. And also as well, a lot of the time, a few of them are quite sticky, right? With that stealth yeah. and divine shield being in the pool, yeah. like those are those are pretty hard to deal with. Uh, we are going to be moving quickly on to game number two, of course, and I believe RDU locked in his rogue, and Frenetic's going to be playing that token druid. He's going to mix it up and change off his demon hunter for just a second, and honestly... If you've been watching some Grandmasters, you'll know my uh, Solomine opinions on Token Druids. Not really the most overcomplicated deck, but it is a very compact deck that does the one thing very, very well when it does have those power turns, right? It's a deck that gives problems that can't really be answered by many, many other decks in most circumstances. A lot of the time, with a big opening from Druid, you need the absolute perfect hand to respond or you're dead. So uh, Frenetic looking to just get a quick win here over RDU's Rogue. Yeah, I do actually think like Rogue is a fine matchup here. Yep. Um, not when you hit exactly this hand, you know, the one playable Druid hand that you know every single <laughs> player hits over and over again. Um, but on average, I think the ability to just curve out quickly with a few three twos, um, Octobot coming into play, and then Colt near fight being the real uh, nutty card that Rogue can hit against Druid, which basically just deletes an entire turn from Druid every time you play it, does make this matchup pretty fine overall. But yes, I concur with Raven. I'm not a huge fan of uh, Token Druid. I was dismayed this morning to find out that uh, Fury Hunter, who's a player that I like and respect a lot, was uh, streaming Token Druid uh, yesterday. So I've uh, had to Unfollow. disallow him. He, Unsubscribe. He's not, like, <laughs> yep, he's not my friend anymore. I've only got about five friends left at this point, and I don't really like them very much. Can confirm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, do you? That might look a little strange, just bouncing the prize plunderer. But he has a prize plunderer for zero in hand now, which is a big deal. Yep. He got hold of the field contact. But most importantly, this is one of the reasons why Rogue can win and, and you know has a decent matchup versus Druid. Is that you have those like such super cheap tools that can clear up these kind of pushes from Frenetic. Fortunately, RDU does have a potential answer to this board, though. Now the question is, does he go field contact here? Does he do it with field contact? It's honestly not that bad, right? You right. can go field contact, prize plunderer, the spell burst, gibbling, and then shadow step replay the prize plunderer on the 2-2. Two -two. I like it. I think he needs to get forward to uh, to near fights fairly quickly because we can see that Frenetic's hand is not gassed out at this point. He's just going to go fungal Ooh. to Glowfly from this point. All right. Okay. I see you. And already. I see you, RDU. You, you. you can see Frenetic's response on camera. As soon as this as this happened, he's like, oh, he has that opening, okay. But I drew the absolute nuts. I'm supposed to win. Yeah, why isn't he conceded yet? <laughs> this is big, though. He has fungal. And again, although the opening was shut down, a lot of games you just win off the back of that. Druid can play later, right? It only needs one board to stick, and then you just pop off and win the game. So he's still in it, although Ooh. Frenetic is going to be slowed down just a little bit. That is one Devolvey boy picked up from RDU. This is going to be a brick turn, pretty much, from Frenetic. Okay, picks up uh, Lunar Eclipse, which is pretty much the best card that he can have. Uh, shoots that at the Colt Neophyte here, I would imagine. There's only uh, 10 Wu remaining that can interact with this, but that's still scary enough <laughs> just to get it gone. Yeah, I was going to say, if there's anything that makes him play that again, I want it dead. <laughs> That's how you yes. feel as Token Druid. Like, let me play my super powerful combos. I think for RDU, you just play your field contact here, right? There's one card you are scared of. It's Glowfly Swarm. And if Glowfly Swarm comes down, then the answer to your field contact is not being played this turn. The good news here is Frenetic's in the unfortunate position of playing Glowfly into a board that instantly clears most of it up, but he has second Glowfly, right? So he has that ability to say, okay, he cleared up one board, but he loses most of his minions doing so. Can he do another board? And that's the big question he's going to ask right now. 
Mm, Jandis now is a little awkward, so we could be looking at ten Wu shenanigans instead. No value trades available for any of these minions right now, apart from the field contact, which it doesn't really work with. Yeah, are you looking like he's going to go digging with Secret Passage instead? I respect this. And look at Frenetic, he's like, just don't get the nuts. That's a Glowfly Swarm, not particularly useful. Yeah, Wicked Stabs are not what you want to see here either. The bonus is with Vanessa, though, is, yeah, the Glowfly, not that important, but it is a 2-3. So against uh, the, any minions left over, if they're not buffed or... If there's another Glowfly coming down, then it will get some level of trade doing. But are you saying no? I want to re-roll again and go. Why is Rogue allowed to do this subtle line? <laughs> it feels like oh, it, it's, yep. it gets to the point, like, sit, like affects in other card games, where it's like, look through your entire deck and choose yes. which cards you want and then play them. Like, that's what it feels like Rogue's like at the moment. It's turn six and he has nine cards left <laughs> in his deck. Okay, what is the plan for Frenetic? Does he have to go Arbor up or do you think this is more of a trade away as much as you can and then replay Glowfly? I mean, the players hit Lunar Eclipse from Nature Studies for sure. He does go additional Glowfly here, interesting. So he just wants to like forever trade for now, right? Trade, 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 Glowfly, and then have Glowfly next turn? Yeah. You can go Innovate Power from here if he really wants to, but I don't really see the merit. I guess next turn he has seven mana anyway, so even yeah. if he top decks like Solar, he can still go Solar Arbor up yep. or like that. So yeah, I guess just adding, make sure none of these minions can trade is very reasonable. There's the Brain Freeze. The Jandis Brain Freeze is a possibility here if RDU just wants to go right for the throat. Looks like he's going to go for one cost and then follow up with Neo fight. Oh, he's gone five costs, sorry. Okay. Took five, yeah. Okay. Brain Freeze, Neo fight, still good. As long as he drops the Neo fight, he can feel at least a little bit safer from the big blowout turns. As you mentioned, the solar into Arbor Up is a true nightmare. Well, he'd just lose. He just loses to Arbor Up anyway, though, right? Because I don't think he can stop all this going through. Maybe he can. Maybe Tenwu with the Golem is enough here. Yeah, I do like some trades here, honestly, from Frenetic. Mm. He has another Arbor Up next turn. Like He just needs to not, like, I, I don't know, not let RDU dictate some of this. Because again, if it's like deal three, then RDU can deal three first and then potentially make the trades, right? So to, to make them stronger. Yeah, I mean, there's two five ones on the board already. The thing, like, the, the the weird thing is, like, the trades don't really change breakpoints that much, right? He traded and then the minions he traded with have one health and there's a one attack minion left on board. So I'm not sure how much right. that I, impacts then going forward. Yeah, I more meant that, like, so there's this one trade left now, fine, one dies, but the yeah. golem could then hit two, four health minions, right? And then sure. suddenly there's there's less options. But yeah, still pretty close. Most importantly, though, Frenetic just removing options from RDU. Right. So he ideally, it's weird, right? Because the two minions that you want to rush into, because it's rush deal three twice, are the two minions on the right, but they're also the two minions <laughs> that die, yeah. The three damage. <laughs> he can't really do both in this position. So now if he Tenwu replays, trade last, because this leaves two targets available for the Golem to be able to hit. It's not too bad, it just leaves two five ones behind. He is currently alive as far as he can see, but plenty of buffs oh. in Frenetic's hands to be able to clutch this one out. Yeah, and although RDU fought pretty well in that early game, taking down that dribbling opening and then drawing most of his deck, it just wasn't quite enough. And again, the, the third Glowfly wasn't needed, but I like Frenetic's approach there because if he just makes wave upon wave of Glowflies, because he has the buffs to back it up whenever they stick, there is going to be a payoff. And that's like the other side of the coin to Token Druid. Yes, there's the incredible on-curve openings that are, feel unstoppable at times, but there's also the fact that they can take a step back 
and just say, you know what, I'll just wait. And at some point, you won't be able to clear all of these minions, especially as Rogue, where they have like spot removal, but they don't have waves of AoE, right? Which is why you saw either you value that golem and, and then bouncing it as such, such a high priority target. Yeah, I've definitely had this experience playing Rogue against uh, Token Druid, where, you know, the first Glowfly comes down, you've planned for it, right? The, the deck's super linear, it's incredibly obvious what they're going to do on any given turn, right? So you, you, you plan for the, the Glowfly, maybe even the same thing that RDU did, you just play a field contact out, right? They play their Glowfly into your field contact, you're like, alright, cool. Prize Plunderer, Divine Shield, Shadow Step, Prize Plunderer, clear your whole board, right? And then I just have four or five, like, 2-2 two, two slash 3-2 three, two minions in play. And I'm like, okay, cool, game over. And then they just slam another Glowfly Swarm the next turn. And I'm just like, oh, well, <laughs> I don't have lethal, so I can't go face. Because the second I go face, you buff every minion in play by 22 and just hit me because that's the only thing your deck does. So then suddenly you just have to trade again. And you just kind of get stuck in this loop where you're trying to remove the board turn after turn. And it's very, very difficult to do. But, you know, again, that just kind of hinges on the Druid hitting the stuff, right? And going yeah. fungal into Glowfly or else a lot of the time it just ends up being, uh, being too slow. Against uh, against Rogue in general, so I think RDU will be fine with you know taking that loss, but Druid getting out of the series without having to clash with Control Warrior is a very big deal, I would say, from uh, from Frenetic side overall. It is going to mean now though, Frenetic's Demon Hunter gets to clash with that Control Warrior from RDU, and honestly, the more I watch this matchup the more I actually like it because it feels like there's some little things that each player can do to increase chances and we've seen yeah. some great victories as well even through Bulwark as just yesterday with Blyze for example so it's a matchup I'm liking more and more the more we see it but here already uh, what is RDU going to be looking for that isn't just the Bulwark of Azanoth? Uh, the Bulwark of Azanoth is okay. what he's going to be looking for. No, um, outside of that, I was actually having this debate with uh, Gia earlier when we were talking about the different builds of Control Warrior. Um, well, she was talking, I was typing. She was she was casting and I was in Discord. Um, but we were talking about various things he's that can change the Cut out this story right? more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need all the, the minutia, right? Um, but we we're talking about the different builds and how things affect things, right? And like, how big an impact does Mutinous have? Uh, kind of big, but you can play around it. How worrisome is South Sea Scoundrel, right? Because Demon Hunter quite often has eight to nine cards in hand, so then suddenly South Sea Scoundrel can burn a card, right? And I was like, ah, still not that big a deal. You know, I'm still fairly happy playing Demon Hunter. If you've got an ooze in there to deal with the Bulwark, you're golden. Even if you don't have an ooze, it's not actually that hard to deal with Bulwark of Azanoth. And then Gia was like, okay, what about Rattle Gore though? And I was like, okay, now that's the stuff of nightmares. Because that's the winning line for Warrior, right? Is that they play the Bulwark, and during that one or two turns that you kind of just have to poke away at the Bulwark to set up lethal, they just play Rattle Gore as well, right? right? And then that's pushing 9, 17, 23 damage over the course of multiple turns. And that's even allowing for it to be killed once a turn, or otherwise it's just pushing 27. Because um, I don't think Warrior does a great job out surviving the damage. Um, we saw Blyze beat Bulwark in Europe, um, and TJ informed me, because I actually slept through Americas for once, that they saw the same thing in Americas with Fled as well, who dealt 144 uh, to a Control Warrior in a series over there. So I don't think Warrior does a great job of outlasting. They have to be able to counter pressure at some point. And there is important to note as well that there isn't Vol'jin in RDU's list, so there's no right. cheating Rattlegore out too early, right, and then winning right. that way. So it's going to be the old school nine cost here so far. He's doing a pretty good job of just applying a lot of pressure by himself anyway. That's one Arcanist down. That's three damage will go off twice. That's the uh, interaction I was talking about before. The spell damage is a battle cry from the talented Arcanist. So even if it dies to the first one, you still get the second right. one. Unlike a card like Blood Mage Thanos. Here though. Backs and smack him. As usual, the Demon Hunter player here, Frenetic, is just looking for card draw. That's all he'll yes. be interested in right now. And most awkwardly, he's already drawn a couple of chunks of that combo, right? So it's a little bit messy in terms of placement, unless he top decks exactly Skull. He's just got so much damage in hand already uh, with Ilganoth. Yeah, <laughs> Frenetic's just looking at his hand and going, okay, that's everything yeah. I need. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're so used to seeing the one fell scream give lethal 
you kind of, or at least I forget sometimes. That, oh yeah, sometimes they double fell scream or do something weird yeah, if there's yeah, you know yeah. if there's m multiple minions on board and such, right? right. To, to do like weird things for like to increase his damage even more. So yeah, it is very possible that with the right couple of draws, Frenetic doesn't even need to do the usual thing Demon Hunter does by drawing its deck. But also these sources of damage, um, being you know the life steal effects that get transformed into damage with Ilganoth can be very important in the late game scenario, right? We saw that with Blyze yesterday, yeah. where he was able to win early and not allow for the time to counter pressure because he just used one eye beam and one fell screen blast to deal with the last two charges of the bulwark and then have the leftover fell screen blast to just hit lethal. So um, could end up being very important here. And there is a mutinous now for RDU. And the only minions in hand are extremely important right now. They're not Ilganoth level important. But they're the next tier down. I guess the good thing is Frenetic having that philosophy means that if one Moag gets killed, he can just dupe and make another anyway. Yeah. And it, yeah, so I would say, honestly, hitting the Moag is worse for RDU here than hitting yeah. the Talented for that reason. And here's where we get into the, the weird part. We will probably end up talking a lot about Mutinous in general throughout its lifespan in Standard. Is, that, is there a reason for RDU to not play it now? Do you just drop it on curve in this circumstance? I think you just play it, yeah. Because it's... First first things first, we, Hearthstone players always go through this process when there's just a card with text on it, is that they think of it as a spell with text for too long, right? The important thing that you need to remember about Mutinous is it's a freaking 7-9 that he just played this turn, which is right. actually representing pressure against Frenetic as well as everything else. Um, so generally, against these combo decks that want to stall out and draw these important minions, they also don't like pressure. So just being able to jam it nice and early like this, even if you don't hit Ilganoth, you're going to hit something, right? Like, the minions are all important to some degree uh, in Demon Hunter. So I'm a big fan here of RDU, just playing his curve and just dropping the big boy here. And now here is Frenetic has whiffed on card draw again. <sighs> okay, so he's, he's making his play. I did wonder, could he have just taken a turn's worth of damage here and reassess next turn? Because he still has the ability to just heal up and like, obliterate this mutinous, right? Well, that is a huge whiff of a turn for RDU, but it does go to show you the importance of just having this minion in play. He's at least representing some amount of pressure this turn. Can feel a little bit better about armor pass. Jesus, what is this draw from Frenetic? This is disgusting. All I know, Ardu is not going to play that Ash Tongue at any point in this game. Nope. Because <laughs> that would be spicy. It's like the original Ilganoth. If you don't really think about it. 35 now from Frenetic is the number, but still possible. He has 9 mana to spend on spell damage and Moogs here. The second Moog will cost 2. So here's uh, Fell Screen Blast. Is oh. going up, and there it is! <laughs> Elganoth off the top! Who needs card draw, Raven? Who needs it? Overrated. Just put every combo piece in the top half of your deck and never draw a single card all game. Yeah, this is this is just the dream that most combo deck players would want, where you just build, instead of a 30-card deck, you just build a 15-card deck and get there quicker, as most combo players would love to not to have to run that 30-card and frenetic got that one out of nowhere of course he was sitting on those combo pieces but with what almost zero card draw that game it was looking grim right Ardu was beating him up he was running low on health he was getting to the point where he'd have to commit another moag and an eye beam to just try and not die but the ilganoth off the top steals the victory there and suddenly subtle frenetic is one game away from the finals one game away, one rogue game away, I believe, as he is one with the Druid and he has Correct. one with the uh, Demon Hunter.
which leaves Rogue on his side. It is regular old Miracle Rogue, even though with kind of the uh, aggressive combo heavy strategy that he's gone with, he has still stuck with the Miracle Rogue and not the Weapon Rogue. Um, so there is that matchup against Control Warrior, which is a poor one for sure that he has to play out. But then the remaining matchup after that, if I've mapped it all out correctly, is a Rogue Mirror against RDU on his own Miracle Rogue. So he is in a very, very favorable spot overall now is Frenetic, just by merit of having two bites of the cherry with one of them being a mirror. Yeah, and if there's anything I do know, so on, I've learned from one of our fellow casters is that it always comes down to a rogue mirror at the end. So I'm not expecting Frenetic to win this game uh, going up against the warrior that RDU is going to queue into once again. But yeah, you are right. It's, the, um, it's a weird matchup I've found because uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've been playing a decent chunk of sort of slow slash control warrior in the past couple of days. And although I feel confident versus rogue, there are certain hands that will still just beat you, and they do oh, yeah. normally involve Octo, and then some level of curve, obviously preferably into Kazakus, because as I mentioned uh, not too long ago, that Warrior, when it wants to play the control style and not sort of the bulky minion style, you need to draw those specific answers, right? For wide boards, you need the brawls. For the, you need the shield slams. For the singular spot minions, you need to clean up. And if th the second you don't really do that on curve. Rogue can Yo. pounce and deal a ton of damage. This control warrior hand also, though, is pretty insane. Yep. Frenetic greeting the living heck out of this Octobot to play around Shield Slam here. Didn't want to drop it just straight into the armor vendor, even though that looks appealing, because obviously RDU has straight up four armor, would be able to just Shield Slam it down. So he is going to wait for the uh, self Procto My Octo on the following turn with the Guardian Org Merchant. Do you think he even greets it more? Nah. Efficient okay. is sufficient. Kind of tricky here, like Frenetic not having access to any card draw yet. Mm. Of course, the nature of doing this now means that if he does draw mainly field contact, his turns look pretty incredible. Coin Outrider's X axe into... Outrider's X? <laughs> we don't talk about her. It was a difficult time in my life. Um... Into Vanessa Van Cleef is actually not an interaction I've seen before, but honestly, I kind of imagine Outrider's Axe is a pretty good card for Frenetic to have access to here. Let's go! Field contact off the top. Probably yep. the singular best draw in his deck. Now, is there a bounce? Does he want two Outrider Axes? <laughs> Does he want uh, a lot of damage? It's out, a lot of damage. Does he want Outrider X one and Outrider X two? <laughs> yes, they're both called Tammy. To win this series, you must defeat my seven evil Outriders X's. <laughs> gonna go with the bounce on the field contact to give him more options going forward. Makes sense. And it looks like Frenetic also might be planning on just starting next turn with a secret passage if the axe doesn't really look too great. Under the assumption that the majority, that, like these minions get cleaned up from RDU, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Um, jokes aside, I like the Shadow Step on the field contact, yeah. for sure, because, you know, we're kind of memeing about uh, Frenetic having Axe, but, you know, RDU does also have it, so leaving it just sat there dead on board. When you really, you've drawn a lot of cards already, but you haven't, your hand hasn't developed a game plan, right? It's not like you're at the stage of the game where you can just start slamming Kazakas, slamming Jandis, all that kind of stuff, right? Because you just don't have access to those cards just yet. Right. So Frenetic is going to need to continue to draw a little bit, it seems like. Oh, Shield Slam, Weapon Swing. How do you show respect for the board? And just knowing that Field Contact's in hand, you don't want to give bounces to cards such as Foxy Fraud, right? That's right. I can take the hit. Quick turns back and forth. Frenetic drops the Outrider's Axe because of course he does. Um, Outrider's Axe is the natural predator of Venomous Scorpid. Um, and then RDU, just natural on-curve play, Shield Maiden. Put some pressure onto Frenetic and it's going to be enough to make Frenetic go digging with the Secret Passage here. Yeah, didn't want to go for Contact plus X. There, I'm going to just greet it a little bit, try and get a bigger turn in the future. Did get that Cult Neo fight with the Prize Plunder, which will be enough to clean up this Shield Maiden, so it worked out pretty well in the end. 
Like I said, not an interaction I've seen before. I theorized that it would be quite a good card, and I have not changed my opinion just yet. <laughs> this seems very good for Frenetic to have found from the Vanessa Van Cleef. Yeah. Like, deal damage, kill minions, draw cards. Draw cards. Mm. Mm. Draw cards? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> He's going to spend the Og Merchant there just to make this Neophyte a little bit more resistant and also just put more pressure on the board. How do you having a bit of a clunky hand right now, right? Like he does, yeah. Brawl, meh. That's all I've got for that. Silas, not really something he's planning on being super effective unless a convenient Jandis, for example, hits the board. Yeah, I expect we will just see the car gap coming down here though. The stage dive was actually a deceptively good draw, I think. Because otherwise he just didn't really have anything to do that turn. But yep, here we go. This is the miracle turn number two now coming out for Frenetic. Once burn damage, our uh, rune orb is the closest you can get to that for sure. Can't spell rune orb without RDU, so it seems like a good pick. Yeah, now there's just options, especially with that brain freeze being picked up. He doesn't even need to ruined up the Karga now, right? You can just save that for actual face damage. Yep, I love it. A face damage or a uh, bulwark charge later on, right? The tricky thing here is, does he want even more minions on the board when he's not seen any of the AoE? I, wonder. I think more so than he hasn't seen AoE is... He kind of needs some minions in his hand, right? More so than anything else. He needs minions in his hand to buffer and protect from the mutinous. Because if he just has Alex Straza and Tenwu in his hand, he kind of just loses at that point, right? Because there's no way he can generate enough damage without getting that combo to go off. Wow. Full disrespect. Straight face, brain freeze your own minion. Forget about the 4 2 on the other side. Right. And to be fair, if you're expecting AoE, right? Why bother? Just get the proc now and go. Mm -hmm. This Kargath probably ends up dead by the end of the turn, regardless. And as you mentioned, Frenetic needs damage, right? He needs to bank a lot of damage in the yes. moment. He does have the Alex combo, which is susceptible to a mutinous, of course, but he also has the Wicked Stab, Rune Darb, has a One Maker in there as well. A uh, One Thief, sorry. Thief, yeah. Yep, apologies. And because it's zero, you can be, you know, Frenetic can be a little bit more loose with what he picks from that in terms of mage spells, right? Because he's not even paying for it on the turn. So, Double Blade Storm, are we okay with that? Uh, let me check. I must choose. Boop. Yeah, looks good to me. You can drop the armor vendor at the end of the turn as well. He's just gonna brawl. Okay. Because he knows Kargath's gonna win. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he's just three damage he gets to push. Now there's Jandis. The ultimate counter to Mutinous. Oh boy, he's, he's playing all of these minions. Potion? I mean, that's a way to put bad minions in your hand, right? <laughs> yeah, eat this 1-1. One, one. You can do really interesting things with Potion and Shadow Step with uh, Tenwu, just to essentially generate extra Tenwus in your yeah. hand. Because um, obviously if you're dealing purely in the business of Alex Straza, turning a Shadow Step and a Potion into a Tenwu is better because a Tenwu discounts Alex Straza by eight, whereas a Shadow Step <laughs> discounts it by two. But with his hand, this Mana Biscuit kind of achieves the same thing, right? Of being that's able true. to Alex yeah, yeah, three yeah. times. Yeah, that's fair. As long as he keeps pressure on board, the scary thing is that he's committing all of these small minions so his entire hand is just super vulnerable to mutinous. I, but um, I, but, I, be, be, but well. because he has so much pressure on board, RDU just can't really afford to take the turn to mutinous. Exactly, yeah. If he plays mutinous, then okay, you kill my Alex, but I deal a ton of damage in, in response, right? 
And he still has double Wicked Stab, which is nothing to ignore at this point as he's creeping towards that 10 mana, which will upgrade it right. to the 6 damage, of course. No. Like, now does yeah. he have to actually... Oh, he can't even go crash into the uh, proc. How much damage does he have next turn? So he plays Alex for 9, and then get 2 mana back. So he can just go ten woo one more Alex. No, he has twenty four. Oh yeah, turn, right. Because yeah. he can he can ten woo Alex twice from that. exactly yeah he can triple. What makes something real? Just another minion coming out the hand though. Like if RDU just ever finds the turn, this is so scary to drop mutinous. It's still though a lot of pressure, isn't it? Because mutinous will still be his whole turn, right? Because the blade storm will still be one mana too much. He does have the Bulwark now, though, is the thing, but this is just too many minions in play, so the Bulwark just gets eaten immediately. Oh. Like maybe he just hits the point where he has to, but now he has he has Crash into Bladestorm if he wants. Do try to keep your yeah, that leaves five damage in play. Oh, he drew Rancor! Oh, he drew Rancor off the top! That's insane! That's so much armor! Oh, Fnatic's probably quite... Oh, Olga. Okay, yeah. that's massive. Not damage, but it is a it is a bulwark charge. Yeah, he's going to do the Alex turn now. With Mana Biscuit here, he can play one more Alex. He's out of mana, and then he has two more mana available. So if he goes Shadow Step, replays one more Alex, then he can fit in a Wicked Stab as well on top of that. Come, friend. Let's see what you've got. Yep. Job done. And the cycle of life is Definitely wants to end the turn. It's good that he ends the turn with Alex on board, of course, because Mutinous yes. is a factor. So he just has an 8-8 now. And that is not the time to be drawing Narolex. What does Crash Blade Storm achieve? 8, 9, 10, 11 damage, but he, so he'll be on 8 health, basically? If he does Crash Blade Storm? Yeah. Which is 1 out of range of Wicked Stab Hero Power. Good placement as well from Frenetic for the, uh, the Silas. The remaining cards are Field Contact number two and Kazakus. So Kazakus, five mana golem plus two plus two is scary. Actually, if Kazakus was drawn, uh, one mana golem spell damage, wicked stab dagger would still right. release. So there's again. multiple hits, right? Yeah. It's going to go crash, blade storm. This is it. Frenetic needs a draw. It is Kazakus. So there are outs. Now, all Frenetic needs to do is just sit and think for a second, right? What does he want from the Kazakus? He knows he's effectively one off. He can take five. It's still fine. Any any source of damage plus that he gets from two. five replaces the dagger. Either of those. Either of those does it. Frenetic hits it. One mana wicked stab for six. Boom with the 15 from the minions. And Frenetic is going to be making it through to the finals, which means, Raven, the showdown in the final is not only going to be between two up and comers, two of the Zoomers to counter RDU's Boomer energy, but also my prediction versus your prediction, Raven. The real showdown today, let's be honest. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm only joking. Uh, huge congratulations to Frenetic there. You can see just from the end of that game and just as we cut from the camera there, emotional is uh, the least of words I could use for that moment because yes, he's still got to take down Blyze to get to the World Championship, but he is in the final. He has had to have pretty much the hardest road along with Blyze as both of these finish seventh slash eighth in the uh, in the playoffs, right? Uh, sorry, to qualify to playoffs to be able to have to take that auto loss in the first match of the uh, the weekend. So tough road for both these players. They both made the finals, but a final shout out to RDU who once again came so close but so far, but a strong performance from him all season as well. So I expect that to continue into season two. Yeah, and it's a small thing, of course, but you know, good recognition from Frenetic right at the end here to just do the combo and leave the minions in play because first off, 
when it's in play, it's in play, and that's a good thing. They're down there, they're threatening damage, but also, more importantly, when it's in play, it's not in your hand, right? And right. that means that Mutinous cannot come down, snipe out any of that potential damage. Multiple outs at the end here with the Kazakas Golems. Various combinations of five cost and one cost would have got the job done. Frenetic sees it, Frenetic hits it, and as you said, it was two.